Thunderbolt 5 represents a massive upgrade in data speeds, display support, and power delivery over Thunderbolt 4. Here's why you should be excited by it, and when I think Apple may adopt it. One of the things that has me so hyped for Thunderbolt 5 is the increased transfer speeds. I am constantly moving these massive video projects around that can be hundreds of gigs, so anything that can do that faster is going to be welcomed. With Thunderbolt 5, those data transfer speeds are doubling from 40 gigabits per second all the way to 80 gigabits per second. That's made possible thanks to Intel's use of a three-level pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM3, signaling system, and by the adoption of PCIe4 addressing. What all that ends up meaning to users is just transferring a file to an external Thunderbolt drive could be up to twice as fast as it was before. That swap to PCIe4 also enables up to 64 gigabits per second of networking, which again is double the limitation of PCI3 and Thunderbolt 4. Honestly, most people have little use for networking speeds like this, but if you are one of the few that do, this is going to make a big difference. But what makes this bandwidth boost even better? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate to like rudely interrupt myself in the middle of a video because I have more cool things to talk about. But before we get to them, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Ivanki, that recently launched its Fusion Dock Max 1. It's designed exclusively for Apple Silicon Mac users and is the only dock on the market with a dual Thunderbolt connection. It is outfitted with 20 different ports, including plenty of USB-C, legacy USB-A, a fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, audio jacks, and HDMI. Here's one of my favorite things about it though, is I love how all of the USB ports are standardized in full speed. Sometimes you get ones that are like 10 gigabit or five gigabit and you have to pick and choose like which ones you're connecting your peripherals to based on what you're doing. No, not with this hub. It's a similar story with the monitor situation. Personally, I use USB-C and HDMI for my monitors. Rarely ever DisplayPort. Yet, most other docs that I have reviewed include a DisplayPort connection on the back. Ivanki chose what makes sense for its actual users. Most Apple users are out there using USB-C and HDMI. I love that those are the options here. Plus, on the top of the line Mac, you can actually run four monitors at once with this thing. That's absolutely incredible and unheard of in this market. The whole dock is powered by two Thunderbolt chips on the inside, so you know this thing is not going to lag. And the dock floats in the air, which promotes good airflow to keep it cool while it's sitting on your desk. If you're like me and you wanna upgrade your workflow, check out the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. It's linked down below in the description as well as pinned in the comments. Now, let's go get back to the rest of the video. Is that it can do up to 120 gigabits per second asynchronously. That means it can transfer 120 gigabits per second in one direction while doing 40 gigabits per second in the other direction. That may not be as useful for things like a data transfer, but it's even more useful for things like external monitors. Thunderbolt 4 only supports the DisplayPort 2.0 spec, which means it can power up to two 4K displays or a single 8K display, depending on the refresh rates. With the higher bandwidth allotment and support for DisplayPort 2.1, Thunderbolt 5 can power up to a trio of 4K displays at 144 hertz, or two 8K displays at 120 hertz each. This could eventually allow high-end users to power multiple Pro Display XDRs over a single cable. Another big improvement is with power delivery. Thunderbolt 4 maxed out at only 100 watts of delivered power. We've already seen the limitations of this with the MacBook Pro. The 16-inch MacBook Pro can fast charge with 140 watts of power, but all of the Thunderbolt ports are capped at 100 watts. Instead, you have to use Apple's MagSafe 3 port, which can do up to 140 watts of power thanks to its support of the Power Delivery 3.1 spec. Thunderbolt 5 will be moving to Power Delivery 3.1, enabling 140 watts as the minimum support, but all the way up to 240 watts on the high end. I know what you're thinking, you are now as jazzed about Thunderbolt 5 as I am, and you are wondering when we're gonna see the first Thunderbolt 5 devices come to market. And specifically, when are we gonna see it in a Mac? Well, sooner than you think. 
we got our first look at several Thunderbolt 5 docks earlier this year at CES. J5 Create, OWC, Hyper, and others gave us walkthroughs of the Thunderbolt 5 docks that they plan on shipping later this year. Apple won't be far behind, and rumors have already started to swirl of its development of the M4 line of MacBook Pros. It's likely that we'll see Thunderbolt 5 support alongside it. That means the next generation of Mac Studio, Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, and maybe even the iMac could include support for the standard. It may even show up in a follow-up to Apple's Pro Display XDR or Studio Display. Since Apple is early on its work with the M4 line, it doesn't look like we'll see the first products until early 2025, maybe the tail end of 2024 if we're very lucky, but with a year and a half between update cycles, 2025 is more likely at this point. Honestly, I think Thunderbolt 5 Sport would be a great upgrade to the MacBook Pro. I would be really excited to see what else they bake in there. But what about all of you? Do you guys use any Thunderbolt devices or do you just stick to USB? Let me know down below in the comments. You could also let me know and share your questions on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Let's stay tuned to Apple Insider and be sure you are subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss any videos for as soon as Apple does add support.